Oh, are we back at Fry's? Yes, we're back at Fry's. Yes, sir, we. We are at Fry's Electronics in Woodland Hills, California on Canoga Avenue. Fry's Electronics seems to be in the spotlight. Everybody seems to be talking about it. I'm noticing uh, everybody else's videos. All they do is go up and down the aisles showing you how empty the uh, shelves are. Well, my videos, I like to talk about the themes. This particular theme is Alice in Wonderland. But hey, don't get me wrong. I did a video on the Burbank Fry's Electronics and I concentrated a lot more on the theme with some segments talking about what I've read on what is happening with Fry's Electronics. But in this video I am going to talk a lot more on what I have read on why Fry's Electronics is either going down or is revamping their stores. Unlikely, but it seems to me that at some of the locations they could turn them into large warehouses where they could do the at-home shipping a lot like the Amazon people. Get a shot of this parking lot, but hey, you can get in before the Christmas rush. Of course, there's nothing in there to buy. I also wonder if they might try to consolidate their inventory and turn it into a store a little bit more like the IKEA store where you can kind of see some of the displays and then maybe go to a certain station and pick your orders that way and they can bring them up to you. Let's go on in and check out the theme. Through these doors. Oh. Don't cry, there'll be a place for you. We'll find a place for you. Where is all that water coming from? Hey, wow, a 60s flashback. Ooh, love the color scheme on that. Oh, it's a wishing well. Hey, maybe we should put some coins in there and see if we can wish that they stay in business. Oh, that's where all that water's coming from. Shame on you, little girl. You got your knickers dirty. Okay, maybe none of this is so damn funny, so let's get serious. I'll pick here to get into some of the real hard facts of the information that I have looked up about what's going on with Fry's Electronics. And let me tell you, it's not pretty. So I'm going to start at the beginning where the father, Charles Fry's, had a supermarket chain that was very successful. It all started in 1972 when Charles Fry sold his grocery supermarket chain for $14 million to Kroger. He gave $1 million to each of his three sons who started Fry's. I've got to say, I love some of the creations of these statues. I mean, God, look at some of the facial expressions they have. As you walk through the stores and see their empty shelves, there are a few various reasons why this is happening and I'm going to get into that in a moment. And as we are passing these chess pieces I'm wondering if you've noticed the floor being black and white just like a chessboard. I like how they put that little hidden touch of those pawns that are right against the uh, countertops there. I think it's great. Many believe that Fry's shelves are empty because of Amazon is taking over the market and that has yet to be seen. Another reason that Fry's gives is they are changing vendors and getting away from the Chinese market. However, another good reason could be that after five years of litigation stemming from high-profile money laundering arrest of a past vice president at Fry's Electronics who had a gambling problem. The story goes like this. The federal court documents showed that Sidikai, a vice president at Fry's, used money illegally obtained through his high position at Fry's to pay off massive gambling debts in Las Vegas and elsewhere. As a child growing up, and I never even knew it until I got older, my parents never 
read me a nursery rhyme. I didn't know any of this stuff when I was a kid. And I have to say, looking back, hey, thanks, Dad. Thanks, Mom, for not telling me about this stuff. Okay, now this is just a little bit scary. I mean, you have to ask, lady, what are you doing with that flamingo? Phoebe Micro in Fremont, for example, claimed at one time that Sitakai owed them about $10 million in unpaid orders. In 2011, Sitakai was sentenced to six years in federal prison after he pled guilty to money laundering and wire fraud. Now, being somebody who doesn't know anything about these nursery rhymes, and certainly doesn't know anything about Alice in Wonderland, is this Tweedledee and Tweedledum? I'm sure you'll tell me the correct names in comments. Now, this has to be my most favorite statue in this whole store. I mean, come on. Doesn't that look like your mom? I mean, when I look at that statue, I can hear her say, Turn that music down! It was John's idea to use the model of grocery retailing, which the brothers were familiar with, to sell computer and electronic supplies, such as integrated circuits, test and measurement equipment, and computer components. The store was, and still is, one of the few retail outlets in the country that sold off-the-shelf microprocessors. The store also sold t-shirts, technical books, potato chips, and magazines. Ooh, white rabbit. There's another 60s symbolism. The store billed itself as the one-stop shop for the Silicon Valley professional. And in 1996, for reasons that the Fry's brothers have never publicly disclosed, they transferred all their shares of Fry's Electronics to a limited liability company called RDL and LLC. And since then, they have controlled Fry's Electronics indirectly through those entities. One of the few stores to challenge Fry's in all dimensions was Incredible Universe a series of Tandy Radio Shack superstores which were established in 1992 and absorbed into Fry's in 1996. Because I'm totally unfamiliar with Alice in Wonderland, this hand coming out of this house, does this mean she's getting big again? Your comments on that in the description box would be greatly appreciated. Fill me in. Historically, Circuit City and CompUSA were major competitors in the computer space, but they collapsed during the late 2000 recession, leaving Micro Center and Best Buy as Fry's main competitors. So we come back full circle to the possibility that Amazon is the culprit here, that Fry's is going out of business, which is yet to be determined. In August of 2019, Fry's announced that they would close the Palo Alto location, its oldest location, by January 2020, but Fry's said its lease at that location would not be renewed. One thing for sure, if Fry's is going out of business, we will know by the last day of December because of tax reasons. Who's your walrus, baby? Yikes, there's a face only a mother could love. God, that's going to give me nightmares. All right, mushrooms. Anyone for mushrooms? But that is pretty clever how they use mushrooms to hold up the tables for the displays. The reason why I brought up tax is most companies do their business from April 15th, well, April 16th to the end of the year. So they're going to want to show profit and loss margins for the IRS. That's how corporations work. So, is Fry's going out of business? We're really not going to know until after December. 
if they're still in business in January of 2020, they're staying in business and they're just revamping and getting new vendors for merchandise. I have to give them credit though. If they've been staying in business without selling anything this long, all I can say is, wow. What do you think about this? I would love to read your comments. If you have ideas of videos I should do, tell me about them in the comment section. Love to read them. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I hope you will subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click on the bell to receive notice of future videos. And I'll see you in the next one.